Joseph, guys. Oh my god, my voice cracked again. Oh my gosh, whatever. Um, what's up, guys? So, there's my bearded dragon eating a bunch of crickets. It's my new male bearded dragon. I'm gonna be doing the breeding in the future, but I got a long ways to go. Like, it doesn't matter how much research I have, I still know that I just gotta do it and do. Like, don't get me wrong, I gotta do research to make sure I'm doing everything correctly, but I just gotta do it and just earn that experience. This one dude said you can't buy it, and I completely understand what he means. Here's my mail. Um, but the only problem that I'm really running into is that he made a good point. Like, I don't know who his dad and his grandfather, I don't know who his father was, who his grandfather was, who his mother was, and that can be a problem. I mean, I guess it can. I mean, he said it was, so I mean, it would make sense. Like, you want to know who the father and everything is. But this is just the, uh, he's really bright and yellow, and whenever he's not basking, he just got done basking, and I'll put some, just a few crickets in there. And here's the salad. This is for the whole trip I'm going to be gone. Like, this is ginormous salad. Um, but yeah, this is not all, the whole, this, there would be more to the salad just while I'm gone. This would be easier for me to just feed him, and then when I get back, I'll give him, you know, some better stuff like peppers and stuff, but he's quite yellow, and he has a little bit of orange, on just very, very little. My baby bearded dragon, will it'll be two to three years, I guess, before he, like, matures, and before I can even breed him, so I'm going to have to buy a female one day, and an incubator, and a good incubator, not just some cheap one, but, uh, yeah, this is its setup. Four feet long, two feet wide, one foot high. Um, I do not like sand, but I'm going to have to use sand for my female. Um, and I'm probably going to end up doing sand for the big guys, like when they're full grown. And I, I'm against using sand completely. But for until they're like legit 100% full grown and just almost like this, basically like him. And they're ginormous and everything. That is when it's actually okay to use sand. I mean, I mean, like, I'll take him out of his cage to feed him crickets. Like, he'll eat his salad in his cage with sand. But the only reason how he gets impaction is from the crickets, like eating crickets and video roaches and worms and such in his cage. If they get out and get in the sand, he goes to eat it, sand gets in. A male can, uh, yeah, no, a full-grown male and female can easily digest that. But a, a baby, it'll just get impaction and it'll die. Name is Spike or Spiky, some sort like that. That's because he's got a bunch of spikes on him, like any other bearded dragon would. But yeah, you get a hot spot of about a hundred, uh, at least it's probably around a hundred and ten. Uh, I get a hundred watt bulb, and it's very close to the light. And then I have the uh, ten point oh UVB right there, and then this is just LED light to light up the rest of the cage. Because without it, it doesn't look right. And he likes the light, so, yeah. And he's also tearing up the, crap, that's why I have this big rock here, is because he's always, he just tears up the whole thing, and it would be easier for me if I use sand, because it'll, um, he'll, if it, I can spot clean it better, like, he just took a dump early today on his hide, and it came all the way, it was this huge thing. I guess he's been holding it for, like, days, maybe a week or something, and I just got him yesterday. Maybe he's been holding it for a while, but dude, it was nasty, stinky, and I had to take out all of this. Well, I took out probably right here. No, it was right here because it was coming out, and it was like, it was catching moisture throughout the whole paper towel. From here all the way down, I had to replace that, and I'm like, it would be way cheaper and easier for me if I do sim. And you're supposed to use sim when you're breeding them, like... I'll put the, uh, I'll, what I'll do is this will be like the female habitat. It'll be nice and short so I can get to her easier. And he will actually be in 150. Um, it's, uh, the 150 is uh, actually kind of tall. It's four feet long and two feet wide, just like this. And it's pretty tall. And, um, I'm going to do, put him in that one and then put the female whenever I get one in here. Both enclosures will have sand and she'll come in here and I'll like dig two holes to help her out and she'll you know dig her hole or she'll be really really active she'll stand do this and do that and he is actually trying to get a cricket right there but yeah you cannot what are you doing 
Alright, so that is... Alright, it just got a hold of the paper towel. That relieves me that he wasn't going to eat the paper towel. So now when I'm gone on vacation, I know he's not going to eat the paper towel. Which is good. But the problem with sand is, is that when he's chasing crickets, he might miss and get sand in his mouth. But I'm not going to feed him crickets inside of this cage. I'm going to feed it outside of this cage. Which... It's a good thing. It can help tame them up. It can help them get used to you. Get used to you. I guess he ate it. I don't know where it went. But yeah, and it'll be easier for me to maintain. And it's easier for me to maintain this diet versus just dumping a whole bunch of crickets in there. But yeah, he's really docile and cool. I know it's a male because he has um, the two bulges where his tail is, and he has a bunch of spots. And I thought they were burn marks, but my dad looked, said, look at them again, they're too consistent. And there's like little spots going across like from here to here. And it's just what males have. In this case, this, the, the spots on him are like ginormous uh, compared to what I've seen on Google. Um, maybe he's like really matured or older, but I know it's not like, um, what do you call it? I know it's not a uh, like a bad effect or he has a disease or something it's just you know it's normal it's what all males have the females however I'm not sure if they have that I'm pretty sure they don't I've not looked at the uh, this underside of a female on uh, YouTube uh, you can still see where I wrote that what did that say I do not know what that says I don't, oh the previous owner yeah I couldn't get this off I remember I couldn't get this off the previous owner of this cage which is a long, long time ago when I got this, like, wrote something, and it's a, a morph. It's a baby, a uh, butter, butter head baby or some sort. I don't know what it said. I guess it was a header, I guess, like, butter morph or some sort of baby. Anyways. Oh, what you do? Yeah, I cannot wait to start breeding, but, um, I'm, I, I don't know, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm really, I don't know how to say it. Like, I'm kind of, like, confused about something. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, where to buy, like, a good incubator and stuff. And something that's really helpful and good. By the way, this is, there was a divider in here. And I had the two male and female ball pythons. Where. Anyways, like, that's something I don't know. Like, there's so many incubators out there. Like, it's confusing. And some people are even making their own, which I, I mean, I bet I can make my own and it'd be really successful. But because it's quite simple, this dude had a 10 gallon. He had maybe, what I would do is like maybe four inches, three to four inches of uh, water in a 10 gallon. He had a water, a submerged water heater in it, in the water. And then he had bricks and then he had a lid and he puts like a, uh, like a blanket or towel on top. And then inside there's like a critter keeper. And the critter keeper had what looked like eco earth, which you're not really supposed to use. It's basically eco earth. You're supposed to use something else. But um, and then uh, on top of the critter keeper, because it was just too much ventilation, that would be too much humidity. Um, he had like a piece of cardboard, which is kind of uh, dude, scuck it a piece of tin foil or something, or yeah, whatever. But uh. Yeah, that was that, and they hatched, it hatched really well for him, he said they were doing great, I saw all the babies that he had, it was on YouTube videos, so I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen all the healthy babies that he had, and I've seen that there were like three eggs left, and I want to honestly try that, because it looks very, very good, and I will be able to um, regulate the temperature for, uh, by like, I'll have a thermostat, and I'll have a really good thermometer that I'll have in there, and I'll, I'll the thermometer will be in the lay box. I'm not, I don't mind what the outside of the uh, of the critter keeper is. I need to know what it is on the inside of the critter, critter keeper, and that's where the eggs will actually be. Um, I think that with my experience of having, this would be my third bearded dragon here, and that'll be my second. The one a long time ago we gotten from a pet store, and it passed away. Uh, it was just so young. Um, so, I, I, that one actually passed away, but the baby I've had now is super healthy and great, this one's super healthy and great, and the baby, these, the baby I have, I got it from Pet Barn, this one I got from Pet Barn, and that just shows that it was actually, I got the one before from another pet store, and a pet store just, 
it was had an unhealthy baby and bought it and that just shows it was actually the pet store that I because I can hand I can take care of this baby in this one and I have a Chinese water dragon I've had uh, five let's see I've had two I've had mm, I've had four ball pythons in the past I've had a king snake two corn snakes and I've had a full grown iguana that got really mean on me that was my dad's actually but I cared for it when he wasn't at home and he came home from work he would care for it and then I had a baby iguana and then I had I've had a lot of animals and they were quite successful uh, the big one got mean and it was very old we didn't know how old it was because it was a rescue the baby came from a pet, an unknown pet store I don't know where my dad got it but from a pet store and baby was always just weak and the UVB that I have was good enough. Um, if you provide good enough, if you provide prop, if you're 100% about proper heat, proper UVB and proper diet, it just shows that you got it from a bad source or it was just something else was wrong with it, you couldn't take it to a vet, you can't afford it or something, that shows it was that. Now, um, I've gotten rid of all my snakes and I have a bearded dragon and a Chinese water dragon. But yeah, he's doing great and I'm really excited about breeding uh, in the future. I'm going to make my own. You guys, you probably, some of you might be against it. Some of you are like, go for it. If you know what you're talking about, which, I mean, I do my research correctly. And I know what I'm doing. And I, I just do this so I can get proper experience. And I can just, you know, I got to, you got to start sometime. And you got to get that experience in. Um, you can't really, just, you can do all the research you want. But you have to eventually get actual experience. And I'm gonna do actual. I'm gonna get that, but I'm not gonna rush it. I'm not gonna rush in any way. I have a male that's big enough, and I'm waiting. I'm not gonna wait for her to get bigger, because that'll be two to three years from now. I need to buy. I'm not gonna wait that long. I need to buy another female, and then I already have a ten gallon that I can put uh, a little bit of water in. And um, it would be actually easier if I did a tub. So I'm gonna do a tub instead of a ten gallon. But I'm gonna do a tub. And then I'm gonna uh, go through, and I'm going to probably what I'll do is I'll take a blanket and I'll wrap the sides of the tub, and in the top I will, uh, you know, cut out a section or something. And the top I will actually put um, like a piece of uh, clear plastic on top of it that'll still hold the humidity and heat in. And inside of that there'll be a critter keeper, and I'll do the same technique like I said, and that'll be in my opinion easier. And better, or I just might have to go out to Walmart and buy a $15, you know, 10 gallon, which is not a big deal. And then I'll do that. The tub will be easier because I do not have, surprisingly, I do not, I have two 10 gallons. One is broken because I don't know, I found that somewhere. And the other one's, you know, good shape. I'm pretty sure I can have water in it, but I've had mice in it. And I've only had mice in it for a couple of days until I fed it to my ball python. So maybe the seals are not chewed up. If not, then I'll use that. But um, I have like a, uh, not a good rent for that, but it'll work. Um, but yeah, and then I will try breeding. But my main thing is to go ahead and get a female. I need to get a female, and if I have to, I can put the divider up. Um, two feet by two feet, my one feet might be a little small, but it'll have to do for just a little while. Uh, not long at all. Like, I'll breed them, but by then, I'll have this 150 in my room, and yeah. So, as I was saying, I'm going to try and get a female sometime within the next six months. And then, within the next six months, uh, I will, by then I'll have a, a maid incubator. And then, before I get the female, I'll have a maid incubator that'll work. I'll make sure everything's working well. Then I'll cut everything off. I'll put it away. I'm not like necessarily away. I'll put it in a spot, whatever, where it needs to go in my room. And then I will get, after everything's done with that, and then I'll get a female. I will then watch, make sure it's like breeding season, which it'll, it'll be a year from now. If I don't get one soon enough. Like, I could get one this summer and then breed them. But, yeah. I mean, I can, they say you can only do this once a year round. But if I don't do this time, I say I wanted to breed them in December. I can make their habitat realistic enough and make them, it trick them into thinking it is 
April or something, or March, uh, or, you know, it's one of those in that range, like summertime, and breed them. But hopefully I can get it soon enough so I can breed them and try my first breeding ever. And I want to do that with the bearded dragon. And incubate them, which three to four weeks after she has mated with him. This is the dude, and I'm going to buy a female sometime. Which will be $100 most likely around that because, well, a full grown, you know. And then I'll have to make sure she's big enough. And if she's not, then I'll just, you know, feed her a lot. Like girth wise. I need her to be nice and fat when I do that and um, kind of like what you do with snakes and then um, see that's where was I uh, I'll get the incubator and then I'll get her and try to breed them hopefully I can do that soon but if I can't I'm not in no big rush because I want to do this right and I want to do all my research but three to, oh yeah three to four weeks after they've mated she will lay her eggs um, within that time she'll be digging a lot she'll stay in one minute place for one minute and then she'll go to the next it's normal a couple days before she'll lay she might not eat which is okay it's normal but afterwards she does need to eat because well yeah so um, she needs to get all that moisture like she needs to be hydrated afterwards that's very important he's actually painting uh, of some sort but um yeah and then about I think it was like 60 I, st I still I, I still got to do more research I want to do enough research so I can remember these things in my head but I'm pretty sure like 64 days later or something like that or very close to that 48 58 to 64 or something days like that eggs will start hatching and um i will do more research like whether i take them out immediately or i'm pretty sure you're supposed to leave them in their thing for a couple days or something or if you immediately remove them like uh for a species i forgot what what like there's for some snakes you're supposed to leave them in there let them I guess some of them will, like eat their egg or something. I don't know 100%, but I'm not doing snakes. I'm doing a bearded dragon. I want to make sure I know everything I need to know to do this before I do that. And I have the time to do the research. And I definitely 100% have the time to do this. <gasps> Sorry, hiccups. But uh, to breed these guys and take care of the babies, I definitely have the time and space to do that. Now, the baby that I have, I do not know what I'm doing with her because... She is taking up space, like I said, and I'm, it's not that I need space, it's just like, like, I don't know how to put it, like, the Chinese water dragon is going into a, another enclosure. I have a 45 tall that he is in, and I could probably, you know, do bearded dragons in there, um, like babies in there or something, and then a 20 gallon I have, I could do babies in it, and then this will be for the, uh, female, and then, uh, I'll have a 150 coming that, uh, is for the male for, is going to be for this male but yeah bearded dragons like if you guys decide to get one it's a definite yes like i can't it's amazing um i actually got him and he was pretty dark but he's brightening up a bit he's a bit yellow but he's nothing fancy i'm gonna try and get like a um like a full-grown like red female of some sort i forgot what you call it like a fireback or something like that um of some sort and then try and breed them and then I'm gonna put them I might even do normals and then I'll put them up there and be like they're just you know plain beauty dragons and I'll put them on Craigslist I will advertise them on Craigslist I mean I will and that's it after like I will make sure they're like at least 12 like like 15 grams in weight and like 12 weeks old 10 to 12 weeks old at least before I sell them and then um, I'll, I'll advertise it on Craigslist I'll ask, you know, my local pet stores that I like. Like, for example, Pet Barn. is It's not super local. It's a drive. But definitely check with them because that would be cool. They keep bearded dragons a lot. And they sold a bunch of babies, like, in days. It was awesome. They have a lot of people that go there, and I'll do that. But, uh, yeah. Please like if you like my bearded dragon. Subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Peace.